My enemies are many. My equals are none. Hello and welcome everyone, Larhart here with part one of my new France Let's Play, the Egyptian campaign for Napoleon Total War with Darth Mod. So we continue our Rise of Napoleon series. We completed the Italian campaign the other week. If you're new uh, to this content and wondering what I'm talking about, you can find a link to the Italian campaign playlist in the description, probably pinned to the top of the comment section as well. So we've now moved on to the second campaign in the uh, Napoleon's campaign series, Egypt. 1798 to 1800. We'll be diving through this, playing through it again. It is a slightly smaller campaign. Once we complete the Egyptian campaign, we then can finally launch ourselves into the third and final campaign of the series, the Grand European Campaign. Um, and that will see Napoleon rise to ultimate greatness. And one or two of you guys have been asking, will I then consider playing through the Waterloo scenario battle? Yes, of course. We will end this whole series this whole rise of napoleon adventure with the waterloo battle i'm assuming we can change the the course of history if we can win that uh as the french so that is what we'll be doing but yeah diving on in uh recording episodes uh for this campaign uh to be released likely daily monday through to saturday each week although probably the first three episodes will be uh friday saturday and sunday to bring in the new year with some napoleonic action so again we're playing this with darth mod which is also linked in the description playing on hard campaign difficulty very hard battle difficulty that is the optimal settings for darth mod itself so without further ado let our napoleonic campaign in egypt begin it was an age of exploration of conquest everywhere. Frenchmen traveled the world, teaching, learning, trading. Always the British were a threat. Their merchants took the best. Their ships strangled our trade. As Britain grew wealthy, France suffered. In the heat of summer, Napoleon landed in Egypt. Now, the East and its wealth would be ours. Egypt. Here, the sands whisper stories of ancient victories and glories. Here, Napoleon felt the history of 40 centuries upon his shoulders. What I have done up to now is nothing, he said. But the desert is harsh and forgiving. Bravery alone will not keep a man alive. After taking Alexandria from the Mamelukes, France must focus immediate attention on the Mameluke leader, Murad Bey, who will rally his troops at Cairo. Killing him is essential to victory in Egypt it's very likely that the Ottoman Empire will soon march its armies south into their Egyptian territory. The forts of Arish, Jaffa and Accra are the main strongholds along their route, so to successfully stall their advance, you must capture each of them. Whilst the Ottoman military presence is not particularly strong in the Levant, be on your guard, as the high port will surely send reinforcements from Anatolia and Greece. These elite troops are trained in the European style of warfare and are known as the Nizam e Sedit. To make matters worse, the British have sent one of their most capable admirals, Horatio Nelson, to the eastern Mediterranean to block your escape routes. No French supplies or reinforcements can arrive while the British naval base on Cyprus is active. And remember that your enemies can not only attack you by land, but also by sea. Make sure all your newly acquired towns and cities are well defended so that there are no nasty surprises to check French progress in the region. Dun dun dun. Now, I'll, I'll mention this straight away because it always gets asked. Why is Leia the advisor? Because we're playing this with a mod called Darth Mod made by a modder called Darth Vader. 
who obviously loves his Star Wars. So that's that's why Leo is the advisor. Um, so yeah, that's some interesting information there in that little flyover there. Um, so yeah, this is indeed before um, the French fleet is hit uh, by Nelson. As this is a really interesting um, kind of period. In fact, I, I was watching a video the other day, kind of preparing for this campaign, and the the French the French fleet with Napoleon and all his his troops on getting over to Egypt. And Nelson, they were they were basically chasing each other across the Mediterranean, and at one point they passed within, uh, you know, very very close distance of one another. I don't know what the specifics are, but they, they because it was I think it was foggy and at night, uh, they just managed to kind of slip past one another. But just think of how things could have could have been different had Nelson spotted the French, seen them, and you know engaged them in 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 battle because. The British fleet at this point is still the the strongest in the world, and um, they would have absolutely and they they do eventually sail on in and they burn the French the French fleet. Uh, I don't actually know if this act is uh, after that because we don't have a fleet, so I'm thinking that perhaps this is set after that that uh, that point where the British have sailed on in and destroyed the French fleet because we don't start with any ships. So our first mission, breaking the Memeluk uh, resistance. We need to capture Cairo, uh, nominally administrators of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, these former slave soldiers uh, factually rule Egypt. It is under the guise of liberating Egypt from their grasp that we have come here. Although we did not fool the Ottomans for long, breaking the Mameluk's fighting spirit is still our top priority by capturing Cairo. We should reduce their army in status to a mere nuisance and Egypt will be uh, will at last be ours. We'll gain 2,000 gold to our treasury. So yeah, we want to march on Cairo pretty swiftly. Uh, that's going to be our kind of primary objective, march, uh, march a path through and claim it and break them there and then, then we can sweep up this way. Let's have a look at our objectives. Uh, also, some of you might be thinking, Lionheart, you sound a little bit, little bit croaky, um, a little bit like you got a frog in your throat, and not just because I'm playing uh, this French campaign, um, but yeah, I, I've been a bit unwell over Christmas, but um, I am feeling better, even though I don't sound better. Uh, but hopefully, I'll be, I'll be sounding back to my normal self in a, a few days' time. I'm probably recording the first couple of episodes today back to back. Um, so I probably will sound like this for the start of the campaign. Also, because this is the start of the campaign, just on this episode only. Unit name suggestions for Napoleon's army. Go, go, go. You can reuse some from the Italian campaign that we had if you would like. Um, I do believe that actually, historically, Napoleon sailed out with like his veteran troops were essentially the veterans from the army to tally uh, that he'd used in that previous campaign. So perhaps we can choose a few of the troops that we had from the end of the Italian campaign to name in here. But well, again, we'll probably won't add in those names until part four or five. Um, also, yeah, apologies for any coughing or spluttering. I am doing my best to uh, to not die while while uh, recording today. Uh, so we need to capture and hold 10 regions, including the regions shown uh, complete by the end of your turn, late December 89. So again, we've got a time limit. I think it's basically the same number of turns, pretty much, as the Italian campaign. Uh, so we don't want to really hang about, because we, we nearly ran out of time with the uh, Italian campaign, but that was because King of Piedmont Sardinia betrayed me. Uh, so we won't make that mistake again, hopefully. So we need our one of five listed victory regions. Uh, sorry, we need five victory regions specifically, five named ones, and then we need a total of ten regions, uh, which we should be able to gain on the way. Definitely, if we control all of the Nile Delta there. So we've got to take Cairo. And we've got to take Arish. Galilee, which is going to be Acre, yeah. And then in into Damascus as well facing the Ottomans. Now, it also said in that flyover that we won't be able to receive reinforcements until we take out the naval base of the British on Cyprus. I was, I, I kind of didn't realize that was as such a big thing, and I thought that was kind of an optional thing that we could go and deal with. I mean, we can recruit a reasonable number of troops, I think, here. But it would, I would like that if we could. The problem is we've got to avoid Nelson's fleet. So I don't know how doable that is. Obviously, we don't want to risk Napoleon and his army going over um so i don't know if we can do it uh i would like to try to though i'm wondering if if that has to wait though until we take um acre perhaps and then we can sail a bit more directly straight across um 
So I'm thinking that may well be what we need to do there because I don't think we can afford to do things just yet. I will probably recruit a ship or two at the start. Um, we've got Corvettes, Brigs, and Sloops. Now, the, the highest firepower is the Brig. Actually, no, it's the Sloop. But... Yeah, so you want to go for the Sloop over the Brig, but the Corvette, while it has much less firepower, it has... Uh, and less maneuverability, it has a much higher hull strength. It's a bit more survivable. Otherwise, it's going to be blasted into bits. But, I mean, let, let's put in a brig there to build, just so we can see um, Nelson's fleet and probably be absolutely terrified by it. But in the meantime, we will, yeah, keep on conquering. If we can do without dealing with the British, I guess we will. If we can deal with them, though, that, that'd be fun. That'd be nice to... to uh, try and beat them if we can we won't worry about that just yet so who have we got here um the sack uh probably gonna butcher the pronunciation so feel free to correct me in the in the comments right brief little edit uh, and cut there because we actually had to reload the campaign because i realized we didn't have uh the correct unit size set up uh, i had to just go and restart darth mod in the launch settings uh, and now you can see we have units at 360 for our infantry uh, before they were like down to 45. They were much smaller than they should have been. Uh, so yeah, that's not now all set up correctly, which is really good. Get the uh, Dromedari Cavalry. Uh, right, just kind of retracing my steps here. We'll get the Brig in so that we can just see what Nelson's uh, fleet looks like. We've got Research Gentlemen. Um, apparently we'll get technology, the ability to research rather, once we take Cairo, that's where we'll march on. But for now, we'll send our gentleman over here. Leave him in there. And we'll send my spy just to go check out Cairo itself. What could we do here? We can assassinate Murad Bey, the leader of the Mamluks. 51% chance. Don't want to risk that. Sabotage the army, 35% chance. Infiltrate, 50% chance. I'm going to go for a sabotage, 66% chance on the tax office. Mission successful. Lovely. He's escaped undetected. Good. And we, he's now actually embedded in the settlement, so we can now see what they have here. Yeah, that looks that looks correct. I was, we were looking at this before, thinking, oh, those those Orta peasant levy, I, I swear they were massive before. Um, and they were only like 120. There's 600 of them now. But they have much lower accuracy, the Mameluke troops. I mean, their main, their main strength is their cavalry. Uh, and it's something that um, throughout this Egyptian campaign, Napoleon uses square formation to brutal efficiency to absolutely annihilate uh, the Mameluke cavalry because that's basically their best troops. We're going to send this army in to attack uh, Daman Hour. So okay, obviously they do massively outnumber us, but their infantry is not is not great. They have a unit of nine pound artillery, which is a little bit concerning, and a unit of cavalry. I don't really want to bring Napoleon down here. I want to send him over to uh, Mahala and then strike Cairo from the north. Um, he's obviously got yeah, some really great troops in there. Got his Dragoons. They're going to stick with him throughout all of his campaigns. Uh, we're going to send yeah, this light, light cavalry here to support and hope that that's going to be enough. I could send you here, but I'd rather send you with Napoleon. So we're going to see if this is enough to overcome their defenses. This this could all go horribly wrong. <coughs> uh, before we do that, though, I am just going to get the barracks upgraded. We get some more troops in there. And we're also going to go for the cannon foundry. So we can get some artillery and we'll go for the basic roads too. And I think we will go for... Well, these guys are great, aren't they? Their accuracy and their ammunition is much higher. They've got a bear, uh, slightly worse melee um, and charge bonus. Their morale lower. Yeah, it is. But their accuracy is devastating and they don't cost as much. I'm going to have to go. But let's get at least two of them and then get some infantry for Napoleon's army. They can play catch up to him. Uh, we'll pop in that logging camp. But now let's have our first battle of the campaign. In we go. Okay. There's their artillery. So what I'm going to do is send my cavalry 
straight on up and over to break the nine pounders and then pull back with them. I'm going to take you guys off far at will because otherwise you're going to end up shooting each other. Uh, we've got a wonderful position here with this with this hill. So we're going to arrange the infantry behind it so they can just uh, chill here and hopefully not get blasted. The light troops. I would remember these. The unpopulists are melee troops. So they will charge us. Uh, and they, I mean, they're not they're not amazing in melee, but they will still do a bit of damage compared to our bayonet wielding troops. So you want to try and shoot them down at range. Um, yeah, I think I'll put the chasseurs all the way over here. Then they're mm, cut off if no, I won't do that. They're cut off if the cavalry charges them. Got to remember that. And these guys can't form square. Square is our friend in this campaign. A flanking force. Go, 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 go. Move you guys up here. Go, 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 go. Move you guys up here. Move you guys around here. Get ready to fire. Why have we got no music? Don't know why there's no music playing. Charge. Move out to the flanks. Okay, and we're now going to move on up with my infantry. There's the music. How much are they following me? A lot. Okay, so we don't want to push that far up. Here we go. Chessers to the flanks. Bring the general on up as well. Let them form up now they've lost their artillery. And then we'll push towards them. Pull back from their Mamluk cavalry. Draw them out to the flanks. That's good. That's fine. What I'm probably going to need to do with my cav is actually use them to hammer into the back of the infantry once we once we draw them in and can hit them. With our main line infantry. I'm going to try and draw that cavalry and if we can deal with them first that would be phenomenal. Move them around here, ready to charge in and break that peasant levy. I'd love to move up to hold between here, but that will definitely be in range of them. No, those are their melee troops. Their missile troops are on the flanks, actually. Interesting. Okay, advance a little bit then. Try and charge him. 
You guys are doing great. Chipping away at this big block of peasant levy. In we go. Bring him down, lads. Get behind them. Threaten them. You guys have lost your line of sight there a bit. Oh, but now you're firing in line against their infantry. Beautiful. They're trying to pull back. They're losing loads of men in the process. Yeah, there we go. There's the break. We've got to pull back, though, because we don't, can't give chase while they've got their cavalry position there as well. The Mamluks shouldn't pose much of a threat to us. The Ottomans, while they have kind of the same sort of base troops, they do actually then start getting some, some better line infantry of their own, Janissaries and what have you, which can be a threat. Derpy Derpy AI just wants to uh, catch some catch some lead. Should be charging my lines. Right now, you guys are having a lovely holiday. Charge them. Oh, here we go. Charging? No, you don't want to, don't know what to do, do you? you? Guys are turning to fire on my cav, but they will manage to still reach. Yeah, at instant break, their morale. They're light levy troops. They're not here to withstand disciplined cavalry charges. Smashed about there. Oh, they're actually getting a few shots off against my chasseurs. So they've moved up. They're doing okay, though. I'm just trying to deal with that cavalry, but I can't commit to going after them. Not just yet, anyway. Although we might be able to now, if they're going to chase me. I'm charging in here. Try and break them. They are finally awkwardly charging towards my line. They're going for it. No. <laughs> they have regrets. Cavalry coming, storming in here. Should be enough to break them. And what I'm then going to do is swing this unit round, kind of close the door on them a little bit. You guys are, are taking a bit of damage, but that's fine. Keep holding the line, boys. Bring my general up a little bit to inspire them. Glorious victories, huh? It's soon to be yours. Yeah, they've just both broken through the center there. Pulled the cavalry back. Pull these guys back. What we want to try and do is draw the cavalry in so that my infantry can just form square One against them. Has used all its ammunition, sir. They've gone. All right, let's advance. The line infantry. Charged in again. Broken them. Beautiful. They should be able to fire on that cavalry there. If they get too close, I will send these guys in. Oh, wow. Okay, you're getting really close. That's going to be a painful volley to receive. 
Oh, they're going for it. Right, form square. Here we go. Here we go. Bye bye, cavalry. They have managed to actually break the square a bit. Yeah, they're going to be forced back out. Does the inventory have engaged now as well? But they're, yeah, they're now trapped and caught. Beautiful. Send the infantry in in a glorious charge. Send my general in as well. Rally the troops. Send my cavalry to hunt these guys down. Turn you lot around to deal with those guys that are coming back. Carnage. Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack! He's alright, don't worry about him. Surprised the unpopulars came back, actually. Let's break him. No, nah, they've gone. And that's the win. Beautiful. End battle. Don't need to carry it on because we're in a settlement. Happy days. Victoire! We lost 177. That's pretty decent. They lost all their troops because, yeah, settlement battle. Bada bing, bada boom. GG, guys. Who got the most kills there, actually? The Chasseurs of Chevalier. They were charging them down. Fuselers of the line did well, though. 643. Happy days. Peacefully occupy. Boom. Now, does that give an opponent any further marching? It doesn't. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to send him over here with his army and I'm going to send that additional fuselage of the line to support his force he's got four of them in there plus the grenadiers plus the light troops he'll have some cavalry coming in as well plus some more fuselage you guys yeah need some stuff oh you got a theater um I mean what is what is my income like here it's okay do I really need that though That's like changing the tax office, isn't it? I mean, let's go for a barrack so we can get more troops out. That'll be all good. Um, I think that's all the moves we can make for this first turn. So let's end the turn. Intellectual centers are the engines of learning in any nation. Indeed they are. They allow the construction of colleges and universities for the gifted to study and advance the sum total of knowledge for the benefit of all. Cairo has one such center. Capture this region so that you may exploit its educational infrastructure for the good of the Republic. Vive la France! Right, let's move this gentleman down here to Cairo then. To the intellectual center there. Looks like we can build another one there, though, eventually when we take it. Right, Napoleon can blast them with cannon. So in we go. These are all really profitable as well. Profitable centers. I'm just looking at how much Alexandria gets you. Damn, 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 damn. Hot air balloons. Observation balloons provide a full view of enemy units and the deployment. There is a risk in the air realms, but uh, there is... Uh, but is there not also glory, honor, scientific curiosity, and a very good view of the enemy? Makes a valid point. Right, can I bring these guys to reinforce? Not the infantry directly in his army, although they will still come in as reinforcements. We'll bring the uh, dromedary cavalry, and then we'll march you guys into play catch up. That one in there. Got room for three more units, which I think at this stage would probably just be three more fuselers of the line. Um, you know what? I will go for some troops to leave behind. I was thinking these guys have actually got better accuracy than the militia. They've got more men as well, but they're terrible in melee. But I kind of want to use them at range anyway. If they get if the enemy get close, and that's that's not good. Are they cheaper as well? No, they're the same price. We'll leave them there. 
We'll eventually bring up more armies as we go on. Gentlemen, maybe order. Can I sabotage more stiff? Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I thought we'd come up with a success chance. Completed the mission. Nice. They'll probably instantly replenish though, won't they? But still. It, he's he's hopefully gaining some yeah some skills some experience he's an assassin assassin no right in we go for this battle what have they got they've got two units of mamluk light cavalry so it's not their heavy cav they've got one nine pounder uh foot artillery some azars irregulars skirmish troops water is it levy water Libyan Bedouin Garrison. Yeah, I mean, lots of mobs. We've got the six pounder foot artillery, cannon shot. Let's blow some faces off. We've got the grenadiers. And we have, of course, Napoleon himself. So in we go. 5,000 Mamelukes to face. Let's actually see how many troops we had going into this. That's fine. Across the deserts. Plains, Napoleon shall be victorious once again. Right, well, the artillery should draw them out to us. They've got one piece of artillery themselves. We want to try and blast that. We need to look for some decent ground. Of which, our starting position does not look particularly great, although that's fairly clear line of sight. We just have to draw them to us, which we will be able to once. Once we deal with their artillery. Now, actually, I did see um, one or two comments on the Italian campaign saying it's interesting to see kind of how I use my artillery, which is almost the complete opposite of how Napoleon used his in, in big, grand batteries, all focused together. Whereas I tend to spread mine out across a line. Um, I might actually have that one unlimited and move it forward a smidge. Yeah, I, I just find having them spread out just gives you more opportunity for canister. Yeah, those two I'd probably want to move forward a little bit, but actually just to start with, try and blast their artillery. Maybe I will just have it like that. Okay, no, I'll move those two forward. That's fine. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put the Grenadiers over on the right flank. Yeah, we'll, some solid strength to pin and hold over there. And you guys in here. Okay, we can probably spread out a little bit more then. Move them forward. It will be, have to be quite a bit forward there, but that's fine. So we want to move them as well. I mean, my Dragoons, I probably could just charge in with the Dragoons and knock them out and then get back with them. So that's what we'll try and do. Send the Dragoons forward. We'll try and harass their cavalry with my Camelry. We'll take a look at them in a minute. All my skirmish troops over on the left. For now. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this artillery needs to be a fair bit forward. And same for you guys. You're happily firing over there. I'm going to spread you guys like so. Have a quick little look at these camels. Oh, who's our hungry, hungry camel? Oh, they're trying to form stakes. 
Yeah, they can obviously create stakes, so they're trying to set them up. If we get the charge in before they initiate the action, they won't be able to place them. But actually, you know what? It doesn't matter because my target here is the artillery, not the skirmishers. Knock out the artillery. It's gone. Get out of there. And Napoleon has won another battle. Pretty much at this point. Like that's that's GG. We've got the artillery set up as we want them. That is GG, guys. Got some more infantry here. Which I will probably have yet yeah, to support this artillery nicely over there. Cavalry's coming back. Hmm. That artillery needs, still needs to move further forward. You guys are probably fine here in the center. I just switched you guys over, did it? Let's go harass them with the cavalry. Draw them out of their safe position. Look at how far these, uh, these guys spread across. Crazy amount. March that cannon right to there. Well done, Dragoons. Cracking job. It's hot work. Yeah, then have the infantry here. In fact, what I'm just going to do is use that. Rather than have them in front, because I don't want them getting caught and clipped by the uh, inevitable canister. Spread the light troops out even further. How are we doing, camels? Pretty nice. So they're spreading out here to place some stakes. Did they actually ever get around to doing it over there? Nope. Shuffle you guys forward just a little bit because when I unlimber you, the cannons are at the back, so we need them forward a smidge. They're just chipping away at them. Yeah, they've placed the stakes, so that whole flank is secured now, which is good for them. Unless they do this and then push out. <laughs> then not so good for you guys. I can charge you. But yeah, I, I expected nothing else from these first few battles. It's going to be an absolute slaughter. Napoleon unleashing his armies. Their full strength against the Mamelukes. The real threat here is the Ottomans and the British. Pull me camels back. Have these guys charge in. Just don't go too deep with the charge into the stakes. And we'll be fine. Put them back. They're smart. Oh, they're going to the stakes, camels. Oh, you survived somehow. Nice. GG. A little gap there. Yeah, here comes the big charge through. It's shredding time. Okay, no. Pull back. Be supported by your other units. Blast them cannons. Square. Square.
if they follow up these charges while we're forced into square with their melee infantry, they can actually... That's how you break squares. But they're not following tightly enough. Oh, some of you guys got onto the wall. Yeah, go onto the wall, guys. back what are you guys doing they're firing across it like that oh they did manage to charge my cannon over here though didn't even see that yeah this is the the one threat they can really do against us charging us in melee because they will unless they break they'll they'll keep charging even under fire keep going until they hit our line Cavalry to that, uh, the, 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 the cavalry to that, the counter to that is usually cavalry. He goes back on your cannon. There we go. Such thick smoke across the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, we sh we should get this series sponsored by uh, by Squarespace. Forming forming squares, you know what also is good in squares? Website design. Totally not sponsored by Squarespace. S Squarespace, if you're watching, some some great product placement opportunities here. You know who also likes squares? Website design. <laughs> Not just Napoleon. Okay, they're gone over here. Just a few in the middle. Just keep shredding, just keep shredding. Happy Friday, happy Friday. I keep I keep thinking at a glance I'm like fighting against Sweden with the with the flag colours, but then I'm like, oh wait, no, it's it's the Mamelukes charged they got shredded they got gunned down by fire by rank okay I, I think i mentioned in the italian campaign i just think this this period of warfare where that was the often the the plan of attack to try and break the enemy lines you had to charge their lines like the i don't know they're just Courage to be able to try to do that, to be willing to do that is insane. I don't know if it's, it's courage, bravery, or just pure foolishness, or a mix of all three, but that just seems mental to me. But, you know, you know, the strategy relies on you breaking various points of the line, which, I mean, obviously the generals probably don't care at the end of the day. They, they know, they've got, they've got manpower as a resource and they need to use it to hammer and break the enemy line. No matter the cost. Oh, we are we are shredding through these guys. Beautiful. Love that wall. One thing I would have loved for both Empire and Napoleon, actually, would have been like a manual volley command. Because you have you have a manual broadside command in naval battles, in Empire and Napoleon. I think it would have been nice. Obviously, you, you could leave them just firing automatically fire by rank, but you could also activate a, um, like a manual volley command where you'd you'd click it once, everyone would reload, 
you One then has used all its you then select it to again then get like a an aiming reticule over over an enemy and then unleash a deadly full volley with everyone firing forward i think that would be pretty spectacular let's get you guys out behind him shoot him in the back That ca cavalry is just sitting there taunting us. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Oh no, me camels! Oh, the steaks! No, right, camel burgers for tea, everyone. Uh, be they horse or be they camel, the likelihood for uh, for losses is very high. Have they turned to face us? Mistakes were made. There was that one guy over there that wasn't quite part of the formation stopping them firing. Are you, are you gonna fire, chaps? Yeah, here we go. Go, go loose spacing if you're just going to sit here and fire at them. Can you guys even see them? Didn't think you could <clears throat> maneuver around. I'm, I'm surprised they're holding so well. The garrison troops there. There's the break. There we go. There's the victory at last. Once the general had gone, these guys gave up as well. GG, heroic victory. So we had 3,712. We lost 373. Damn, that is. That's solid against 5,000. GG, man. Artillery getting the most kills, then the camels. Well done. That's, that, that was the camel group that actually ran into the stakes as well. GG. Top work, chaps. Peacefully occupy. Nice. Reasonable replenishment. Um, tax office. I mean, I'm still going to go for army encampments just because I want to be pushing troops out like crazy. Although here, I'm going to go for the basic roads first and we'll get that artillery ground up next turn. Um, I guess we want to just Push on Cairo. Straight away. Um, do, 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 do. Gather up our forces and push. Probably do that still pretty comfortably. Um, we got, we've got more infantry coming, so it'll probably take a turn or two. <clears throat> or we could send these guys over to link on up can napoleon can he like go down there in a single turn pretty much we'll see what things look like next turn then right let's do one more end turn i think i'll get my brig actually there is oh here we go the british threat uh capture the city of uh nicosia uh more general due to the british control of cyprus and its surrounding waters we are unable to get any well-trained soldiers from france we know that the treacherous Ottomans let the British uh, use of the island of Cyprus as a base of operations. If we can conquer this island, we might be able to get some supplies through. This is an extremely dangerous undertaking. We might be better off securing our position in Egypt on dry... 
Ah. Uh, uh, this is an extremely dangerous undertaking. We might be better off securing our position in Egypt on dry land, but if you feel particularly daring, then this is an option. Be aware, though, as the seas are our enemy's favorite terrain, and the accursed Nelson's fleet is still patrolling the waters. So, if we do manage to take it, we will gain 4,000 gold and a unit of fuselage of the line. But I think it will take a substantial amount of resources to achieve this. I wonder if actually, I wonder if that mission's popped up actually, not just because we've gone through like a turn or two, but because we built a brig. To disembark an army. I mean, let's see if I can get up there. Nelson's fleet starts basically here at the start of the game, so I assume it immediately moves. I want to see if I can scout out the island and just see what's going on. Maybe even bring my spy up there. But I'm not going to risk him just yet. Yeah, we're getting all those bits going. But yeah, I, th I think rather than going across from here, we'll go across from Acre where it's a shorter distance and we could probably send troops across in a single turn and drop them off. If we then lose the fleet, doesn't really matter. But basically, in this campaign, it is impossible to defeat Nelson's fleet with the, with the ships that we can build that we're just completely and utterly outclassed. But what we can try and do is knock out their power by taking Cyprus. Meanwhile, how does the garrison look? Okay. Try to sabotage the army again. I was detected. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. They're still repairing that. Good, 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 good. Right, we were going to go for getting the army encampment in there. I mean, taking all these cities is generating us a lot of gold, so yeah. We can still keep pushing troops out, which right now I just want more infantry. We can go for... Yeah, we've got... So, oh, we've got fuse layers on the line. We've got line infantry. What's the difference? Fuse layers on the line. Are they more expensive? They have slightly... Fuse, uh, line infantry have slightly worse reload skill. And then their, stat, their melee stats, their melee attack is lower, their charge is lower. I'm wondering if I, maybe Darth Maul adds in the Leaf Fuselier's line for this campaign, because I feel like weren't you restricted just regular line free, because our rewards are essentially Fuseliers, aren't they? The morale is the same at six. Do you have any different abilities? No. I mean, the, the line for you look pretty cool because obviously they're, they're set up more for the desert and what have you. That's fine. Right. Um, yeah, I think we need another... Actually, yeah, we only need another turn for his infantry to all be fully healed and then actually we can strike. Even if we march on out. So let's do that. Bring these guys in and then march on over with. Oh, was I selecting the right ones there? March on over with you guys. You guys happy? Yeah, good. You've got more troops coming in all the time, so that is a okay. You guys are replenishing. What I'm going to do is, yeah, move this army across there. They could move on out. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not opposed to trying to draw them out. To be fair, that's also viable for us. Right, and then yeah, send you down here. Lovely stuff. And then one more turn. Works on strike. Okay, uh, still fine. Report. So, we actually could have, we could have got our army over here if we wanted to. But how many armies do they have? I can't quite see, which is a little bit frustrating. Are we about to see Nelson's fleet here? No, we're not. They're building up a trading port. I'm just going to hit it. Yeah, we've just completely destroyed it. Nice. 
I don't know where Nelson is, but he's probably coming for this ship. But let's let's use this as a, a scout brig to see what's along the coast and where their armies be. And what's occurred in? Yeah, the better wind down here. I mean, we, we can go and grab all this from them, but we can also keep pushing. So what we'll probably do is Napoleon will keep pushing all this way and we'll leave a small force at Cairo to push down and secure the upper parts of the Nile as time goes on. Um, right. Do I need to take agents out? Do they get killed if they're left in settlements? I feel like that's a thing. Use spies to but maybe I'm misremembering. Okay, they've got a lot more militia in there. That is going to be pretty terrifying. I want as many infantry as possible. That may actually take another turn to do this. Gives Napoleon another turn to fully replenish. And then he's got a full army. Oh, he can actually still march. My camels aren't at full strength, but do I really need them for this? No. Ah, just shy. Okay. okay, no, what we do is we do the old jump on that with a unit and then strike like so and they come in as reinforcements. It means we can't set up initially, but that is not a problem because they have no artillery. They have 10,000, basically. Just shy by 300. Got to remember, though, even though it looks intimidating, um, it's a lot of militia, a lot of mob, armed populace. So we will have the great shredding and the face off against Murad Bay at the start of the next episode. So until then, I hope you've enjoyed the start of this brand new series, this brand new campaign um, on the channel. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a it'll be a fairly short ish series, probably between like, 10 to 15 episodes, similar to my Italian campaign. And then we have the big grand campaign, the European campaign with Napoleon in this three part Rise of Napoleon series. But yeah. Be aiming to release episodes pretty much daily, Monday through to Saturday uh, going forward. Although you'll probably have an upload um, on Sunday this week as well, if I manage to record another two episodes today. So until the next one, I hope you've enjoyed. Take care and ciao for now.